Hey, how's everybody doing today? Y'all ready to have another chat? Well, welcome to episode three of It's Still Called Today, a podcast of encouragement. All right, we're back with episode number three on It's Still Called Today, a podcast of encouragement. Last week we talked about unforgiveness, and today we're going to continue that that topic. Well, we talked about the forgive, forgiveness and why we need to do it. Today we're going to talk about what happens when we don't. Okay? I realize this is a sticky subject for a lot of people, and it and it is for me too. But it's something necessary, especially in the life of a believer. You, we can't be holding on to bitterness and things like that. And still expect to be pleasing to God because after all, he forgave us and we need to do our best to forgive those around us who have wronged us. In the 18th chapter of Matthew, we see in verses 21 through 35, starting at verse 21 and uh, says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister if they sin against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy times seven. Now back in this day, there was a, a teaching that said you for, should forgive somebody the, the rabbis of that day t had a teaching that said you should forgive somebody three times. And then after that, you're okay. Well, Peter was thinking he was being generous and he upped it to seven times. But Jesus kicked it up to 70 times seven. Or 77 times some translations say. I actually prefer the translations that say uh, 70 times seven. And what it really means is you should always forgive when it's, you should always forgive people. You should never hold on to it. And further on in the same chapter, we hear the story of a king who was going through his debts and trying to settle things up. And he ran across a servant who owed him, according to the NIV, 10 bags of gold. Now, that's a lifetime of work, probably two lifetimes of work, but 10 bags of gold. And when the king threatened to throw this guy into jail, he said, forgive me. I will work and try to pay you back everything that I owe you. But the king knew better. He knew there was no way in the world that he could pay back that type of sum. So he forgave him of his debt. Well, once he walked away, there's no timeline on it, but he found a guy who owed him, you know, four or $500. And when he found, when the servant found the other, his friend who owed him four or $500, he was less than merciful. As a matter of fact, he had him beat and he had him thrown in prison. Well, word gets back to the king of what this servant had done. And once the king found out, he sent for him, had him arrested, brought him back to the, pal brought him back to the palace and told him, hey, guess what? I forgave you of this debt this massive debt and you couldn't forgive your brother of this small debt, guess what? You're going to prison and you're going to stay there and you're going to be with what the Bible calls the tormentors. So because he didn't forgive a small debt when he had a large debt forgiven, he wound up in a world of, wound up in a world of pain, wound up in a world of trouble. Now, the Bible says that uh, if we do not forgive our sins, our Heavenly Father, let me, let me try that again. The Bible says that if we don't forgive each other our sins, our Heavenly Father will not forgive ours. And that, that makes me a little bit nervous. That makes me a lot nervous. When God, who knew no sin, became sin for us, 
died on that cross, we can do no less. And when we don't, we're not exhibiting the character of Christ. We're not showing mercy, and we're not exhibiting godly character. Now, I know from personal experience, it's hard to forgive people. And people say, well, you don't know what they did to me. I think a lot of people have those stories. But still, when you hold on to things, when you hold on to unforgiveness, when you hold on, forgiveness is a seed and it gets planted and then it starts sprouting roots. And those roots that it sprouts are bitterness. And they're sown in seeds of anguish and discord. And when that plant grows up, it's going to affect everything else in that garden. It's going to affect everything else around it. Kind of like you ever seen Bermuda grass kind of take over a yard? Well, that's exactly what's going on here. Although this isn't Bermuda grass, it's, it's Johnson grass, it's Dallas grass, and it's going to destroy your yard. And it's going to make it ugly. And just like when we don't forgive, it makes our witness ugly. It makes our relationship with Christ impaired. And we won't be able to see the things that God has for us because we're holding on to this bitterness. And we're holding on to this unforgiveness. And that's really not a place you want to be. Now, let me stress this. I don't believe everything that we struggle to forgive people for or the hurts that we experience in this life, some of these will not be healed this side of eternity. It's going to take some time. When we make an effort to work through a process of forgiving someone for wronging us. I believe that God is pleased. And as we take a step, he takes a step. And as we take the next step, he takes the next step. And like I said, it may not be all healed in this lifetime. But I think we need to show some effort. This subject is near and dear to my heart because it almost ruined my life. I was mad at God for a long time. Being born with a visual impairment means there's a lot of things I wanted to do in my life that I just couldn't do. I just didn't have the eyesight for it. I mean, there's a lot of things I wanted to do. My father was an air traffic controller, and that's something I really wanted to do, but I didn't have the eyesight for it. I wanted to be... A truck driver, a long haul truck driver or an airline pilot. I had this litany of things that I wanted to do that repeatedly my eyesight kept getting in the way. And I was bitter and I was unforgiving toward God and not accepting the situation that I'm in and doing the things that I can do to his glory. I hope all this is making sense. When you forgive somebody, you're not absolving them of the wrong that they've done. When you forgive somebody, it doesn't always mean restitution of a relationship. When you forgive somebody, you're taking the pain that they caused you and you're giving it over to God. And you're saying, Lord, please help me walk through this. Please Help me forgive this person so I can show Christ-like character, so I can grow, so I don't have anything that's impeding my fellowship with you. And that's really what it all comes down to. We don't want anything to impede our fellowship with God, especially when we've had such a great example of the, on the cross of the forgiveness that he showed. When he was hanging on that cross and bleeding and, and going through some of the most unimaginable pain, you know what he said? A man who was without spot or blemish or sin, you know what he said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
how can we do any less? If you're listening to this and you've had some situation that you're struggling to forgive somebody before because of the pain, because of the emotional damage or even physical damage, I urge you, I urge you to pray. I urge you to say, God, I want to forgive, but it's just so hard. God will hear that and he will answer that and he will be at your side just like that. And it's a process you can both walk through together and you can be set free. Unforgiveness is a precursor to bitterness and bitterness is a precursor to anger and anger. That's not a righteous anger is a destructive force. It will tear your relationships apart. It'll break up a marriage. It'll sever friendships. It'll end employment. The ramifications of hanging on to, to bitterness and unforgiveness are staggering. Now, I realize this isn't the most happy conversation we could have right now, but I feel like it's one that we need to have. And I ask in Jesus' name that if you're sitting here listening to this, that you will make that first step, that you will acknowledge the difficulty in forgiving somebody and ask God to help you. Guess what? He'll show up and he'll help you do it. And then the freedom that you experience will be awesome. Well, this one's going to be kind of short and this is going to be the last time. Well, not the last time, but this is going to be the last one in this two part series on this. I just kind of want to encourage people to, to make the effort. You know, God has shown us so much grace and so much mercy. And our goal as Christians is to be Christ-like. And if you're going to be Christ-like, then that's something you need to show people. Mercy, grace, forgiveness. I understand that it's difficult. And oftentimes the hardest person to forgive is yourself. When my wife walked out of the house 12 years ago, I made a flippant comment and I... I never saw her alive again. The next time I saw her was when the police came up to show me the pictures of her. I struggled with forgiving myself because I felt like had I not been so flippant and make it a smart aleck comment, maybe she'd still be here. And I beat myself up for that. And as a result of that, I treated myself poorly. I treated myself with contempt. I put myself in a bad place. And it was in the process of destroying the relationships around me that I had left with my children. And that's something I still have to ask for their forgiveness for because I went completely sideways. Don't let this happen to you. Make an effort. Okay. Now for the song of the week, it's going to be Grant, uh, Brandon Heath, Give Me Your Eyes. That's Brandon Heath, Give Me Your Eyes. Listen to this song, and I hope that it ministers to you. And hopefully, you know, you can make some progress. And it would be great to hear about it if you're watching this or listening to this on Spotify. Leave me a voice comment. Let me know what you thought. Okay. Next week... We're going to talk about friends and the kind of people we need to have in our lives to speak truth to us. And I hope that if you're listening to this and you draw some encouragement, even though we don't know each other, I hope will you consider me a friend. All right. I ask in Jesus name that the Holy Spirit will minister to the people who are hearing this and struggling with the forgiveness and that I can help you point you in the right direction because unforgiveness is an awful, awful place to be. All right. So 
we're going to wrap it up here and I will have something posted next week. Um, we're, like I said, we're going to talk about the kind of people that we need to have in our lives versus the kind of people we don't. All right. So once again, the song for the week is Brandon Heath. Give me your eyes, Brandon Heath. Give me your eyes. And thank you guys for listening and have yourselves a wonderful day. And remember, encourage each other daily as long as it is called today. Thank you.